Hey, be quiet. Go lay down. Hey, go on. <clears throat> Hey everybody. Hey John. Hey John. Hi. Yes, Go lay down. Now. Good to see you. <laughs> hey Bill. Wow. Hi, Prophet John. Hey John. Go. How are you? Good, sir. How are you? Good, thank you. I I I heard your um, interview in. The message from Bangalore, that was very powerful. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was at least a, a fresh word for Bangalore. And then during that 12 nights of revival, they had another prophet who released pretty much the same thing. So a great confirmation. Oh, cool. Yeah. Craig and Zanny, how are you? In the car. <laughs> yeah, we're doing well. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. You can, yeah, we're in, we're in Algonquin, Maine. Okay, wow. We were wrong. in Arizona, but we made a wrong turn, I guess. I'm not quite sure what happened. But. Oh, hi, Evelyn. <laughs> hey, Evelyn. <laughs> John, how are John. you? Hey, hi, John. Hey, John. Colleen, I know we can't see you, but hello. We'll give it a few more minutes for the stragglers to get on, then we'll get going. Mm-hmm. Hey, John. John, I, uh, I'm trying to get my sister to join up today. We'll see if it works. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting John right here. In Minnesota, oh, we have people in Maine. <laughs> Al and John are in Northern California. Hi, Hello. John. How are you, John? Good to see you. Hey, John. John. Hi. How are you? Lots of Johns again. Lots of Johns. <laughs> <laughs> I like to start on time, but we'll give it a couple more minutes. I'm on the phone, John, but I'm switching to my computer. I just want to give you a heads up. Okay. Well, I'm expecting a special time with the Lord for the next half hour, 45 minutes or an hour. Um, mm. I've been seeking the Lord today, actually all week. And, uh, you know, he's, he's actually, when I was in prayer this afternoon, there was an excitement, I sensed an anticipation I'll wait till people join. Hi, Roseanne. What was he? And then we'll get going. Nice flower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flower girl. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll just start the party. What kind of flower is that? Uh, it's plumeria. That's very pretty. Thank you. It's two together. We'll wait till Roseanne gets settled in, then we'll get going. Okay. John's just about to, my husband's just about to join me too. And you know, we if, could, you, I, I, oh, if, um, just so you know, I, like today I started, I opened the meeting 30 minutes early and I have music playing, worship music. So if you find you want to sign on earlier and just worship the Lord. You, know, you can turn off your video and just listen to the music and your audio. Awesome. And uh, so I, I do that. I just want to let you know. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, hey, John. Hi. 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 <laughs> we had trouble getting it off. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Shalabakata and Jabakoko. 
All right, we'll get going. Hey, Paul, how are you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? All right, good to see you. God is good. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, bless you. Lord, I thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. I thank you for your presence. Lord, even as we start this meeting, we turn it over to you, over to the Holy Ghost. And Father, we ask that you take it in the direction that you want it to go, that every word that I speak is of you and gives you glory and honor and edification to your body on this call. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. As I was saying, I'm a, when I was in prayer before the Father this afternoon, I sensed there was an expectation by many joining this call, but then I saw the Lord, and the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, son, you tell them tonight that they're excited and expectant to see me, but know that I've been waiting because I'm expected in my heart to see them this evening. Mm -hmm. I just sensed he had something special for us. Mm -hmm. As you know, this prophet's corner, the whole purpose is for the Lord to release his words, to take us deeper in the prophetic, whether it's teaching, whether it's prophetic words, whether it's impartation. And I know that an impartation has been taking place. That's been a promise that God gave us, that those who join this call, there'll be an impartation of the prophetic. That will, even if you've been prophesying or you've never prophesied or you're standing in the office of an apostle or prophet, whatever, God is taking the anointing that is upon us and increasing it and increasing it. Mm. And that was a promise. Now I say that because God is fulfilling those promises. We saw it even on here, someone prophesy for the first time. I received counts this week that people have received dreams about people and the next day they run into them. Mm. Wow. That's training in the prophetic. The prophetic's being activated. We can't take those things lightly. But I say to you again, there is an impartation, an anointing that takes place. It's not because of John. It's because of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And I hate to belittle the point. I don't like to use the word a lot, but the remnant. And you are part of the remnant. We went over that our first meeting. And I saw again today, the Lord said, I'm raising up my remnants. And I'm putting them together, a remnant here, a remnant there, seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And my glory shall flow through those threads and my redemption and my power and my fire. And tonight I'm going to read a word, two words over Temecula. We'll review the word over Escondido. And if we have time, we'll look at San Diego and California. If not, we'll hold it till next week. But one of the first things we learned is that God does nothing but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Amos 3, 7. Just like I was thinking the other, just like Moses on top of Mount Sinai, when God gave him the Ten Commandments, God didn't shout it down for that mountain. He carved it with his finger in those tablets, gave it to Moses, and Moses, the prophet of God, took it to his people. These things have not changed. This is a way God communicates to his people here on earth. This is the way he takes from the timeless eternity where he sits puts it in the earth realm where there's time and releases it. Mm. I want to say this. There seems like there has been somewhat of a pause with the words that have been released a little prior to 2010 in North County and in Temecula. The Lord said, when he sends his prophet, there's some reasons why he does it. One is, it kindles the faith of his people. When we hear a word of the Lord, it increases our faith. God said, I'm sending a prophet now, and I'm going to re-release the words. 
to rekindle the faith in my people who've been seeking my face these last 10 plus years on what's happening in Escondido and what is happening in Temecula. And there are some people here from Temecula mm -hmm. and Escondido. Mm -hmm. He sends a prophet to remind them what he has spoken in the past, to bring mm -hmm. his word to remembrance. He also confirms, and I know as I released that word on Escondido, it confirmed what a lot of you have been sensing regarding Escondido. Tell me if I'm wrong, but it did. God was saying, I'm confirming what I've been showing you in the prayer closet. I'm revealing it. It's confirmed. It is going to happen. And when he sends, I heard this, he says, I send a prophet to rekindle things that have been laying dormant. God is rekindling things right now. You know, last week we looked at, we did a little more teaching on the fivefold, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, first the apostle, secondarily the prophet, then teachers and miracles, healings. We looked at the agency and the office of the prophet because that's the prophetic corner, because we want to know, and I'm not saying this about me, but when God sends a prophet, a true prophet of his, and that prophet releases a word, that is not just the prophet's own word. His spirit, energized by the new birth experience, powered by the Holy Ghost, his spirit is a prophet before he was born. God takes that word and sends it out into the atmosphere, and it starts a blueprint. It starts something building. It's like Isaiah 55, 10, and 11. The rain comes down, and the snow comes down. That water, and it remains. It waters those seeds. Those seeds start to germinate. There's a germination that takes place. Mm -hmm. I wrote down a gestation. When a prophetic word is released, say over Escondido or Temecula, a gestation takes place. First the egg, then it the, grows into a fetus, and then a baby is birthed. <laughs> so is the prophetic word that is released from heaven through his human agents here on earth. It could even be angels. When that word is released, something is birthed. A seed is it's. A seed is planted and it's going to be birthed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the only reason I say that is because at the end of the meeting, we talked about when a prophet gives a prophetic word, what happens in the spirit realm? It's not just a person. Like I said, you can think a super spiritual person standing there that says, something thus saith the lord but when he or she says thus saith the lord there's angelic hosts that have been assigned to that person to make sure that word comes to pass how many of you have had prophetic words spoken over you by a prophet you've not seen those words come to pass yet i'm telling you there's an angelic guard that was released making it come to pass god has released every resource in heaven to make sure his word not that prophet's word his word spoken through that prophet comes to pass in your life things are being set in order human beings have to be moved place resources demonic struggles have to be taken mm -hmm. down things have to be put in order there is mm -hmm. a timing to the prophetic word of god there is a season like ecclesiastes there's a season god's season so my wife reminded me, I said, Sherry, you should have jumped in. And it's funny because I'm going to talk about Temecula tonight. And many of you, you might have been there, I think Evelyn was, at the Stampede in Temecula. And I was up front ministering. And this will give us an insight to what happens when a word is decreed. I was up ministering, laying hands on people. And the power of God was there, I remember. And... Prophetic words, the glory of God was hitting people. They're falling under the power. As I stood there, I looked down the line. I was by the stage, and I saw three or four people. Something 
the glory of God was hitting them. I couldn't see where it was. I said, Lord, what is going on? Some of them were falling under the power. No one was touching them. And then the Spirit of God moved on me. Decree over Temecula. And I remember I decreed some things right there in the name of Jesus. And you could sense the power of God. Something broke. Something happened. Mm. But God opened the eyes of some individuals there to see exactly what was taking place. One was my wife. She was in the, the where the people were seated. And she saw, I had no idea, where those people were falling under the power of God. It was like, all I could see were the, it was like glory flakes in the spirit coming. It was the glory of God. I didn't, I said, Lord, you're really doing something to them. But she saw, after the meeting, she saw a huge angel sitting up there. Now, my wife, she, she doesn't say these things lightly. She doesn't make these things up. <laughs> and she saw this huge angel and when I decreed that word you know what the angel did she said he was sitting there like he was bored but still the glory was coming off and people were falling under the power when that word was released by the prophet of God Sherry saw his hand go like this <laughs> time to go and then all of a sudden a myriad of angels followed them. they got up and went and God is so cool because as she walked to the back, there was another man, a man there said, did you see all the angels? Hundreds <laughs> of angels. Love it. Why did God do that? Even for a moment like this, that it could be shared, that our faith would be ignited. Not only when a prophet declares a word. I don't care if it's Bill Keith. I don't care if it's Cynthia, Roseanne, Jaw the Johns. It doesn't matter. Al Williams, when he declares that word under the anointing, it's God. Things happen in the spirit realm. It just doesn't fall to nothing. Things happen. You guys are a powerful army. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Last week, I, re I showed you my, told you my vision of the army I saw in the encampment, mm -hmm. raising up in order, wearing white. And I could hear the, 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 the weapons, the swords clanging in the armor, and they were moving out. Huge, mm -hmm. glorious army, moving out slowly. What a momentum behind them. The Lord gave a shout, it's time to move out. I'm telling you, the army of the remnant, the remnant army is moving out. Mm -hmm. It's not sitting dormant anymore. God has blown mm -hmm. his trumpet. We are moving out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Thank you. And I remember it was at last meeting. My wife was in bed. And I picked up a book. I said, Lord, I, I was a little discouraged, to be honest with you. God did some wonderful things. But I said, I was thinking about the remnant. I said, Lord, am I talking too much about the remnant? And I picked up this little book. And this is a true story. You can ask my wife. I opened it up, and it's a book about the characteristics of a prophet. And there it said, prophets speak to the remnant. <laughs> well, it wasn't coincidence. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if we'll have time to get to it today. I'm trying to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit because the Lord gave me a whole picture on the remnant army in Joel, and I might go through that. Mm. Maybe I will. Why don't we, well, yeah, why don't we do that? I think it's good. Let me see, I wrote it down. I'm gonna read through. Is that okay if we look at the remnant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is showing us things in the spirit, like when a prophet declares or you declare what's happening. But let's mm -hmm. take a look at what the Lord, the remnant army, looks like in the spirit. It's Joel chapter 2. I'm just going to read through some scriptures. And I'm going to start. At verse 1. B said, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble and shudder in fear. I'm telling you right now, the remnant army is moving out and the remnants, the 
demons, the spirits, the fallen angels, they are shuddering right now. They just mm -hmm. don't want you or me to know they are. Mm -hmm. For the judgment day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick dark mist like the dawn spread over the mountains. There is a pagan people, numerous and mighty, like that of which is never before, nor will be again afterward, even for years of many generations. Now this is about the army. Before this army a fire devours, and behind them a flame burns. Before them the land is like a garden of Eden, but behind them a desert wilderness. Mm -hmm. And nothing at all escapes them. I'm telling you this remnant army which you are part of is determined and powerful anointed and you are your face is set like a flint i said it before you are moving out step by step you will not be wavered you will not be buffeted to get you off track it says their appearance is like the appearance of horses and they run like war horses powerful do you know horse in this in the meaning the spiritual meaning of horse is power spiritual power horsepower in the spirit and this was interesting like the noise of chariots the sound of the army and that sound the enemy quakes at they hear the sound of the army they leap on the tops of the mountains like the crackling of a flame of fire devouring the stubble there's a sound to the fire they carry mm -hmm. Like a mighty people set in battle formation. Mm. And then it says, all faces become pale with terror. I tell you right now, this army that's being raised up, that has been, been being raised up the last couple decades and longer, starting mm -hmm. the beginning of this decade, is standing up strong, and the enemy's face is starting to get pale because he knows. Don't let the children of Almighty God, the sons and daughters, mm -hmm. rise up in the power and anointing and the authority they've been given. Not only that, but in unison, like a mighty army, like horses marching next to each other, step by step by step, determined they will not be moved, but they will take the victory that they've been assigned. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. It says this. They run like warriors. They climb the wall like soldiers. Have you come against any wall put up by the enemy? We all have. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you climb up the wall like a soldier. They each march straight ahead in line and they do not deviate further paths you know what that means mm. whatever your calling is whether it's an apostle or prophet or teacher or giver god's blessed you with the anointing to make money and give whatever it is a pastor they're not jealous of the soldier next to him or the captain behind them they're staying in their lane and they are not deviating from their path. They have their assignment and they're staying on their path. It's not a competition. And I've studied war. I've studied it. In the Civil War, they would have to stay in line, stay in their position, because if a gap opened in the line, that was a weakness for the enemy to exploit. There is a unity coming upon the remnant like this world has never seen before, and the enemy will not be able to exploit. He will not be able to exploit this yes. army, for there will be no gaping holes. If there are a gaping mm -hmm. hole, it will be like that, just with other people. But I'm telling you, they will not deviate. You and I will not deviate from our paths. They do not crowd each other. Each one marches in his path. When they first do the defensive weapons, they do not break ranks. Yes. This is important. When an army breaks through a defensive formation of the enemy, mm -hmm. and if the offensive army that's that, and they break their ranks afterwards, that assault tends to dissipate. Mm -hmm. But when that army 
breaks through that defensive line of the enemy, breaks it open, and that army stays in unity and keeps going. Fear mm -hmm. goes down each line of the enemy. All the troops start mm -hmm. to retreat. Not only do they retreat, but it forms a rout. And we're talking mm -hmm. of the remnant of the army of God, not only defeating and putting fear in the enemy, and making them retreat, but routing them. We will not let go. We will not put take our put our foot on the brake. We will keep going and going because when the enemy's weakest, it's best to keep going, going, going as an army. Amen. We're going to take That's this right. world for the Lord by, by His grace and His power, not by our own power. This is interesting, isn't it? I just came across this. Let's see, nine, they rush over the city, they run on the wall. You will not only climb the wall, you will run on the enemy's walls. You will climb into his houses and they enter the windows like a thief. And when I read that, the Lord said, they're gonna go and take back the plunder that the enemy has stolen. Isaiah says, for their shame, I shall render double unto them. How many on this call have been shamed in finances, in loss of jobs, in health, in family, in whatever? You've been shamed. God says for your shame, he's going to give you double. You're going to go through that window of the enemy like a thief, and you're going to take it back. Praise you're going to dance on the walls of the enemy. You're going to conquer those cities. We are not backing down. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The first heaven, earth, and the second heaven shake. Not only can you hear it in the natural, but the spirit realm. Like I said, you hear the implements of war. You hear their feet marching. You feel the momentum. You sense the anointing. You can hear the crack of the fire of the Holy Ghost upon them. The enemy sees it. Just like you each have a mantle on your shoulders, what you've gone through, what God's called you to, your authorities, your spheres, that's all there. The enemy sees it. The sun and moon grow dark and the stars lose their brightness. Let me explain this a little bit when I read that. If you read back in Ezekiel and that it talks about war and the sun and the moon be darkened and the and stars turn dark, well, that did not literally happen. What's happening here, that represents authorities, government authorities, principalities. As we march forward as the remnant army, these principalities, these angels, these demons, they grow dark. The stars lose their brightness. They're not as strong as they once were. You take that land, their control over that principality, over that area, that territory, starts to diminish. Oh, wait till I tell you the word for Temecula regarding the land. And the Lord utters his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. And that's what I saw. Don't think of the word as a remnant. I said that on the first night we got together. It doesn't mean small. The remnant is a large remnant. There might be small remnants, but they're coming together into one large tapestry that will cover the earth. The glory of the Lord shall cover the earth. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The Lord utters his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, because strong and powerful is he who obediently carries out his word, for the day of the Lord indeed is great and very terrible. I want to, I'm just going to go down to, oh here, verse 18, the Lord will be jealous for his land and will have compassion on his people. And keep this verse in mind when I talk about the prophetic word for Temecula. 
The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I'm going to send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied and full with them. And I will never again make you an object of ridicule amongst the nations. For your shame, you'll receive double. But I will remove the northern army far away from you. And I will drive it into a parched and desolate land. They've been in the land of the Garden of Eden. The enemy is going to be pushed back into a desolate place. And we will occupy that property, that territory. But then I want to read this one. And 27 is a good one. And you shall know without any doubt that I am in the midst of Israel to protect and bless you. And that I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. There's that word shame again. That I shall pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. You see visions. And I'm going to go to verse 32, the last part of it. As the Lord has said, even among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know. I just happened to open the Bible. And I was at Joel chapter 2. I started to read it. And God said, that's my a description of my remnant army. And I get to the bottom of that chapter. It says remnant. That jumped out at me. I'm telling you, let's take the blinders off of us, the limits off of us. This is not because we've done anything or deserve it, but it's what God has made of us. He's paid the price. Man. I just thought that was interesting. So when you stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the enemy, all of you know this by already, but when you stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, know that you know that you know there's one person going to be backing off, and it's not you. Glory to God. I just feel like praying. It's all right. Pray in the spirit. We're, this is a safe place. Pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. He who speaks in an unknown tongue doesn't speak to men, but God mysteries. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Kepo Tandaku. My children, know that you're mm -hmm. God, warrior king. For I have in my right hand a sword that shall slay the enemy. Yea, not only do I have it, I place it in your hands. Hold your hands out now, says the Lord, and receive the sword of the spirit of my word. Let it come out of your mouth with greater power than you've ever experienced before. For, oh, it's not you speaking it, but it's my words you're speaking, and they're anointed. And when I speak a word, it comes to pass. Cut the enemy in half, says the Lord. Cut him in half. I am placing upon you an anointing now, a warrior anointing, that you'll love the battle, you'll relish the battle, you not only make victory in the battle, you will pursue and pursue and pursue the enemy till he's utterly defeated. This is my remnant army. This is the banner over them. They will not suffer defeat. I only speak victory, victory, victory. I say the world shall know that I am the only true and living God, and there is no other name given under heaven by which men shall be saved. I say it shall go out with renown greater than it ever has before. Yea, I shall confirm my word with signs following through you. Thank you, Lord. What takes place in the spirit? Listen to the words of my prophet. Speak those words, for yea, they shall manifest in the natural. I will make sure it happens. Birth, birth, plant, 
grow birthing. Plant, grow, birth. Speak those words. Plant those seeds. Plant those seeds. Water them with your intercession and watch me birth it. Some of you think, God, you, Lord, you will only sign one angel to me. I'm telling you, I have insurmountable amount of angels to take care of any word that you release according to my spirit. You are not left with one angel. I'm telling you, many are walking around with whole groups of angels protecting mm. you from the enemy right now because of what you've done to his camp. Thank you. I will never leave you, says the Lord, nor will I forsake you out in front of my battle line. You will not be out there alone. I'll make sure through the power of my spirit that you're walking in your divine destiny in the path I've called you to. Even now, as I'm speaking to you, I'm calling things in order because I am a God of order. In my word, there's a verse that says, don't think more highly of yourselves than you ought to. But I'm telling you right now, think more highly of yourselves for what I've done for you. You stand as kings and priests and sons and daughters of me, of my Father. You are standing in the heavenly realm, the third heaven, even though you're in the first heavenly realm right now. The authority I have here, I can so forth through you here in the earth realm that the world knows. I have promised you, says the Lord, that the glory of my latter house shall be greater than the former. I'm building my house, and I'll be pouring my glory upon it. The former rain came a little bit, but the latter rain's coming. Thy word says that they'll both come down in the same day. I'm telling you, you are standing on the precipice of me releasing my spirit in a deluge like this world has never seen before. Even when I flooded this earth, it didn't it doesn't look in the natural like it will in the spirit realm when I pour out my spirit. I tell you that every speck of flesh shall be touched by my spirit before I come. Mm -hmm. I shall do signs and wonders, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if I were to tell you now, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> we praise you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. When I was with the Lord this afternoon, he was, he was anxious. I'm not just saying this. He was anxious to meet with him. <laughs> He wanted to share things. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you and I are bringing great joy to his heart. Mm -hmm. He looks throughout the earth looking who he can use and mm -hmm. trust and raise up as a great army to go from a baby to a young man to an old man. First John 3. Mm -hmm. God is raising up unto perfection, maturity, and he's looking for those hearts. And in this group, he's found them. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get to the words. I, I don't want to go past time. Yeah. We went over the word last week in Escondido. I don't think I'll get back to that. Just to know, remember, the Lord looked me up, had me look up the word Ventana window. God is setting a prophetic hub in Escondido. It seems like things have been dormant for over 10 years now, but God said, no, my word is not laying dormant. I've now set my prophet to redeclare, to ignite your faith. And the Lord says, when I speak my word, your faith is rekindled. When your faith is rekindled, your faith moves my hand, says the Lord. You're working in conjunction with my word. And when you work in conjunction with my prophetic word, then the scripture comes to fulfillment that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet and receive my reward, says the Lord. Mm. That's how it works. My word goes out. I will accomplish it. But my people hear my word and something sparks in their heart and they come along and they, their faith is activated and I cannot but stand up off my throne and move according to their faith. 
We are co-laborers, says the Lord. <laughs> That's why my word says, believe my prophets and you shall prosper. And I give you this promise tonight, says the Lord. There was a man who they brought my ark to his house. It stayed there four months. Obed Edom. His heart was right. I blessed him and his family. Yes. Your heart is right. You are carrying my presence. You're treasuring my presence. I'm telling you the promise of Obed Edom. If you take yeah. and receive this, is upon you and your families. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, so let's go over a couple words for Temecula. The first word, I remember I released it about 2008. And Evelyn might remember this. I had a vision. And I saw Temecula from the from the side, if you're driving up to Temecula, those mountains on the left by old Temecula, I was kind of standing there. And I was looking down upon old Temecula. And I saw this big foot with a sandal on it step down right there in front of me. And when that foot stepped on it, it was huge. It, it had to be a football field long or longer. The, a crease, a crack started running parallel to Old Town Temecula and the earth opened up. And then I saw rain fall to the north and it came and it filled this crevasse. It was rocky on each side. Mm -hmm. Gray rocks. Remember, gray. And the Lord said, I'm preparing Temecula for a great flow of my spirit. What he showed me then was what he was doing in the spirit realm. He was cracking open a channel, a canal for his preparing for a flow, a mighty river of his spirit. And then he gave me Psalm 1 verse 3 because I saw a green tree on the side. And this is for you in Temecula. He said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. I also saw in those leaves there was healing, healing from that area. I also sense when I released this that years prior to that, prophetic words have gone out over that region. Mm -hmm. And someone confirmed that that was true. But they've gone out powerful words over the Temecula region there. God is sending his prophet. He's rekindling those fires, those words in that region right now. They have not been dormant. They've been laying there. But then I was shocked. It had been after I released that word, it probably, and to, I went up to Temecula the first time in, I don't know, years. Probably around 2013. Or 14, I don't remember, maybe it was 15. I think it was to meet Joel for a cup of coffee in Old Town mm -hmm. Temecula. And I was shocked to see that a canal was being built right behind Old Town Temecula. If you go there now, it's cemented in gray rock. What you're seeing now is what has been taking place in the spirit realm for Temecula. God has prepared the way for his river of his spirit to flow through that valley from the north part of it down through the south. Not only that, Escondido and Temecula are attached in the spirit somehow with God's plan. This is coming to my mind. I'm remembering this. I remember it was early morning, maybe 9 or 10 in the morning. I live in Escondido. I was driving up 15 to go 78. I had to go to Costco or something. There are very few cars on the road. And I was doing, I don't know, 65. And I, I'm 
getting close to the the ramp that goes 78 and all of a sudden a white dove was one foot outside my driver's window keeping pace with me just flying just level i looked i looked at my speedometer two things one i've not seen a white dove in escondido before and secondly i didn't know doves could fly that fast and why are you flying so close to my car i thought he'd fly away he stayed with me with me mm -hmm. And then I exited to take the ramp, and I saw him continue to go straight up Highway 15. And I could see as I went up on the far side of the ramp, I saw him go up a little bit. I could track him, and I slowed down. I saw him continue to go up Highway 15. Hmm. The outpouring that God has promised for Escondido is going to go up Highway 15 to mm -hmm. Temecula, and a spirit's going to come from North mm -hmm. Temecula down that river. They're going to meet together. It's going to be a powerful revival, an outpouring mm -hmm. of a spirit. Thank you, Lord. And I, I heard this. I, maybe I'll save it till the next, yeah. Because I was in prayer today, God gave me, I'll read you this, this vision. I was praying about Temecula, and I heard the words, good land, good land. I thought, hmm, I think that's a scripture. I looked it up. Deuteronomy 8, 7. This is for Temecula. Listen to this. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and the hills. It seems dry spiritually, but God is bringing into a good land the brooks and streams. And I like this, the deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So here's a second word I had for Temecula. I hope you guys are getting something out of this. Mm hmm Yeah. Shut up. And I released this. I had this written down in 2010 and 2011 in Temecula. And it's Judges 15. It's regarding Samson. And do you remember in that story, he was upset at the Philistines, and he took 300 foxes, and he tied their tails together with a, a torch. I'll read it. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes, and he took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, and put a torch between each pair of tails. When he had set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and the olive groves. And what I saw in Temecula, I saw these foxes going out with fires in the spirit realm. And the Lord told me what these represent, the shocks and the standing grain and the vineyards and the groves. And let me just read it to you. The shocks, he says, are standing wheat that has been cut off from the earth very dry. It represents believers who have cut themselves off from the true vine and are dry. The fire that God is sending with either will either burn them up, causing destruction to some, and set others on fire for him. It's their individual choice. Mm -hmm. The fire that God is releasing in the Temecula area with those foxes in the spirit realm, those who've been cut off from the vine, God, remember we've, we spoke about Consider the goodness and the severity of God. There is a dividing that has been taking place. You army, you remnant army, you party, you've you decided on the right side like I am, but there are those who have not. The choice is theirs. Do you remember the vision I had when the, 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 the Christians flowing in the streams, reaching up, saying, hey, jump in, it's great, and a lot of them didn't, and God said, now, now's the time. They're not reaching up saying, jump in. It's been time, the Lord says. Those who have not jumped in, the rest are following their destinies in the Holy Ghost. And they will fulfill it. Okay. So then it says, it burned the standing grain. And the Lord said, it's those believers who are still grafted in the vine 
and there is some fruit who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. God wants to set them ablaze of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then the vineyards. The fire of God is going to destroy the old wine and the old wineskins. Mm -hmm. going to plant a new vineyard to produce the new wine out of the new wineskins. Restoration of the apostolic and prophetic in Temecula. The correct order and liberty in the church. And the Lord said, let my people go. We spoke about that yes, the last time we met. Let my people go. And I can't tell you the size of the lock I saw put around chains on the church. It, it was bigger than when I saw that vision years ago. It's a huge lock. And the Lord says, let my people go. I'm mm. closing down churches. I'm closing down those shocks and those standing sheaves that have not received the fire of the Holy Ghost, not interested mm -hmm. in it. I am burning them up. My people are not going back into dead churches, into the dry fields. Mm. Thank you. Let my people go. Mm -hmm. Right now, Father, yes, right now we call forth those that have been stuck in churches where they've not been released into their callings, into their destinies, whether they be apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors, teachers, or gifts of healings or words of knowledge, words of wisdom. They've not been allowed to operate or even seek or covet those gifts. They've been stifled. I rebuke that right now in the name of yes. Jesus. I decree in Escondido mm -hmm. at Temecula a freedom to mm -hmm. the people of God. Let my people go, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, don't you as leaders stand against my spirit at this time, for my spirit is like a rolling, it will roll you over now because my people will be let free. I saw like a big, like they paved the roads, a big rolling machine. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Now the olive says the oil is found within the olive. Religious leaders have not allowed the oil of the Holy Spirit to flow free, freely in the power of the valley, the valley of Temecula. The Holy Spirit has been quenched and contained within the olive skin. This coming fire is going to burst the olive skins and allow the oil of the Holy Spirit to flow. And as the oil is released out of the olives and falls upon the fire of God, it will burn even brighter with more brilliance and flame. Signs, wonders, salvations, and I have here revival for the Temecula Valley. It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It's coming. Hallelujah. So, thank you, Jesus. Thought, that Deuteronomy 8, 7, a good land. Mm -hmm. The Lord says Temecula, the valley, is a good land. There's prophetic words that have gone out. His words, thus saith the Lord, there'll be a great revival there. It's going mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills. Sorry if I release a personal word here. I, I, I just, I keep seeing this and um, I saw it today in prayer. I keep seeing it as I read this. I see the, the wine country in Temecula, the wine country. It's a good land, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
there's something about the wine country. It's been set apart for the purposes of God. Mm -hmm. It's where people go and find joy as they drink of the vine. But the Lord says, I tell you, there's a day coming that people will come and the wine of my spirit shall so flow in the wine mm -hmm. country that as they drive into that area, my spirit of joy shall come upon them. You'll find them laughing in the streets. And it won't be because they drank too much regular wine. It'll be the wine of my spirit. It shall fall upon sons and daughters and those who don't even know me. They'll wonder what is happening in the valley of wine of Temecula. We go there and we receive a joy. We receive a flow that we don't get from the wine in the glass says the Lord but they're tasting of my spirit my joy many shall fall out under my power at the vineyards at the wineries they shall fall with glasses still in their hands and they shall come up a different person yes a new creation yes Amen. Jesus. that valley is for my glory says the Lord mm -hmm. Oh, shade of that cocoa. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, no. Yes, Lord. Yes. He wants us to know that his angels mm -hmm. are already stationed there mm -hmm. to oversee this coming to pass. I see them. They are big angels. And I saw this. And, and this is for Bill Keith. I, I've been to your home. You live in the wine country there. I don't know. But I saw a hill behind you. I don't know if you own that or not. But I saw a building placed on top of that hill. And it looked like a barn. A red barn with white. I don't know why. But I saw the glory of God coming out of it. And the Lord says, I want to place there a structure that my people come to it will be known as a place of prayer and miracles where they know I'm there, my spirit is there. It shall shine in that valley. Yes. It will not be business as usual. I don't know, but it, I saw it up there. I'm just telling you what I saw in the spirit and I saw gold light coming out of it. I saw a big door on the side and in there people were on their faces it was almost like a zuza street or any they were on their faces <laughs> praying weeping before the presence of god and god was doing wonderful things mm -hmm. miracles not just yes. healings miracles mm -hmm. I, oh, Miracles of renown shall be released from that spot, says the Lord, and it shall end up in the newspaper's front page of the Los Angeles Times. And people say, what's going on in the Temecula Valley? You think there's lines of cars going there now? You wait, says the Lord. You wait. Like a field of dreams, build it and they shall come. My fire, those foxes I've released, says the Lord. I've released them. My fire is going through. It's going through as my servant speaks right now. It's burning up the shocks. It's setting people free. It's destroying the old wine skins and the old wine. My new wine is being poured out. The olives are bursting and the oil of my spirit is flowing out pure with power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at that. 459. Right on time. God is good. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Lord. This is my heart. Mm -hmm. I see you guys on mm -hmm. this. this. This is the Lord's idea. And, and like I said, one person said, I'm purchasing Zoom for you. I think we need to do this. And that's what it is. I'm just trying to be faithful. I'll be here, Lord willing, next Sunday at the same time. You can go to the website if you ever want to check. Right on the homepage, you can check the time. You can just click and it'll take you right to the Zoom meeting or, or go to um, up to a calendar. 
and go to the drop down where it says um, the profits corner. Click on that. There's a link there. There's information there. Um, I will send out like I did this week. If you subscribe, then you're on that email list. I can send you out just so you have it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to let you know that. And you feel free to ask how you feel you need to or you're impressed to. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. And I'd, I'd like someone, John Cusimano, would you mind closing us in prayer, brother? No, I'd be happy to. Father God, we do thank you for the time that we've had to spend with one another. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we thank you for the, the word that you have uh, uh, replanted in uh, John's heart, Lord, for the areas mm -hmm. that he prayed about today. And Lord, we're believing that your spirit is going to see that through because your word does not return void. Mm -hmm. So yes, Lord, Lord, for those that were not able to join us, we ask that you would bless mm -hmm. them. And mm -hmm. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon each and every person that was at this meeting. And yes. we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Bless you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. You got them. Oh, man. I was in such pain, headache all day. And finally, yeah. I came out of prayer and I, Sherry asked, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, it's gone. I was yeah. like, three o'clock. Thank you for your prayers. All right. You got it. Bless you, guys. Hallelujah. Bless you. All right, bye.